Welcome to the Hospital Finance Podcast, your go-to source for information and insights that can help you stay ahead of the challenges impacting healthcare finance. And now, the host of the Hospital Finance Podcast, Michael Passanate. Hi, this is Mike Passanate, and welcome back to the Hospital Finance Podcast. The 2019 fiscal year IPPS final rule has published, and perhaps by now you've even had a chance to take a look at what some of the key changes are in that rule. Uh, But to help us uh, look at that a little bit more closely and understand uh, how they might affect hospitals in this coming year, I'm joined by Dave Korn and Bob Mahoney from our reimbursement services team here at Bessler. Gentlemen, welcome to the program. Thank you. So, Bob, let me go to you first. Um, one of the things that uh, occurred in the final rule uh, was the elimination of the imputed rural floor payment program, and that's something that you know we've dealt with a lot at Bessler and is certainly uh, near and dear to our heart in the state of New Jersey. Um, can you talk to us about the significance of that? Yeah, Mike, I'd like to because that's one of the more significant things that changed in the final rule, and it affects mainly three states. New Jersey, Rhode Island, and Delaware. And basically those states in the rural floor, CMS determined that, in CMS's determination, uh, New Jersey, Rhode Island, and Delaware do not have any rural areas. And the rural floor had increased these hospitals so they couldn't be paid lower than any rural hospitals in the country. And now with that going away, a lot of money is now spread across the wage index because it's it's budget neutral, so it will enhance all 50 states. There are 10 hospitals in New Jersey, nine in Rhode Island, and three in Delaware. They'll no longer receive an increase to their wage index on October, starting October 1st, 2018, and that will have a significant impact on their Medicare payments. Indeed, um, something that. Um We've, we've certainly kept an eye on for a long time, and it's going to be a big change in the coming year. Um, Dave, let me, let me go to you. Can you talk about some of the high-level updates to the Medicare inpatient payments rate in the final rule? Uh, sure. Um, well, first, for effective uh, October 1 of this year, um, hospitals that report quality data and are meaningful users for electronic health records they'll receive approximately a 1.8% increase in their Medicare operating rates. And what what makes that up is there's a a market basket update of 2.9%, and that's going to be reduced by 0.8% productivity adjustment. And then there's also a 0.5% add back from the documentation and coding adjustment that was previously taken away from hospitals. Uh, and then there's the uh, then there's also a 0.75% uh, reduction uh, that's required uh, by the Affordable Care Act. Now, one thing one thing I mentioned is and one thing to note is that the 1.8% um, increase. If you look at the tables that were published in the um, in the final rule, uh, they don't add up to the 1.8%. And the reason is because if the tables did not include the um, the 0.5 percent increase uh, that's required from the um, documentation and coding adjustment that was uh, part of macro. Now, because of the rate increase, um, CMS is projecting an increase of Medicare spending on inpatient hospitals uh, by about 4.8 billion dollars uh, in fiscal year uh, 2019. Uh, now, part of that increase, a big part of that increase, is an increase of 1.4 billion for Dish, and then there's also a 0.2 billion for uh, new technology add-ons. Now, um, though the increases will will go into effect, I mean the penalty, the, but the penalties that have been in existence, uh, like for uh, excessive readmissions. Uh, the one percent penalty for worst performing uh, quartile in the hospital acquired conditions, and then also the um, value based purchasing will continue to have its ups and downs. Uh, but I think at least overall the 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 fact that a lot of hospitals should get um, an increase in their rates uh, is 
is some good news for a change. Yeah, I'm sure that'll be very well received, Dave. Uh, Bob, can you talk to us about some of the dish changes in the final rule? Yeah, certainly. And as Dave just mentioned, the, the uncompensated care pool is increasing $1.4 billion, which will significantly increase hospital funds. Um, as part of the ACAA, Medicare disproportionate share hospitals that qualify are paid based on 25% of DISH Classic and 75% of that uncompensated care pool. Now, one of the big changes in 2019 is that CMS is going to begin getting to use the S10 data. And we, you know, a lot of people have been talking about that, and it's becoming a much more important schedule in the course report, the S10. And they're going to use S10 data for 2019 from 2014 and 2015 course reports and also uninsured low-income data from 2013 to, to distribute the uncompensated care payments. In 2020, they plan on using completely based on S10 data, and that's a significant change that some hospitals have to be aware of. So payments are going up, but the reporting is changing. So something to keep an eye on as we look into 2019. Thank you. Oh, and, and also something else that um, – uh, was in the final rule that I don't know if, if very many people caught it, but uh, because of their they're using the S10, CMS is expecting to begin audits on S10 information in the fall of uh, this year. So um, I guess something to look forward to. I guess. That's big. Thanks, man. That's a great point. But one more thing uh, to be audited, right? <laughs> yeah. Exactly. <laughs> Um, Bob, uh, next one's next one's for you as well. Um, there was a change to the name of the Electronic Health Record Incentive Program, but there were also some changes to the program itself. Can you talk about that? Yeah, I mean, the major change to the Electronic Health Record Program is they changed the name of it <laughs> to the Promoting Interoperability Program. And what it's going to do is place more of an emphasis on patient care, and that's a good thing. And uh, one of the key provisions of the overhaul, you know, it's, it's minimized, it's finalized a new performance met based scoring methodology, which is a smaller set of adjustments and objectives that were used in the past. So this will, you know, be less burdensome in hospitals and promote more patient care. And that's really a good thing for CMS to do is to the clinical staff. It's less paperwork. They believe this, the, what, everybody's going to electronic health care record. It's working. So now... They can have less time, more time with the patients, and less time worrying about the paperwork. Always a good thing. Yeah, it makes a lot of sense. Uh, Dave, one thing that is new, um, and I, I think it's um, very much in line with the trends that you see out in the marketplace, is hospitals are now required to post their standard charges. Uh, can you talk to us about what that means and what deadlines are associated with that? Sure. Um well, the, the, basically, it's effective January 1st of uh, 2019, um, and CMS is requiring hospitals to make a public online list of their standard charges, and, they, and the hospitals also have to update that annually or more often if appropriate. So I guess if you have a um, – if during the year you have a change in your uh, charge structure, then you will be required to go out and update update your the online uh, charge listing. Now, see, the reason CMS is doing it is you know they're they've over the years have always been trying to be more uh, price transparent for consumers, um, and then this is you know so this will help with the tri uh, price transparency, but also you know improving access. Uh, you know, to charge information from hospitals. Thanks, Dave. Uh, Bob, any changes to the two midnight rule? I know that's uh, something that's been floating around for several years now. There were no changes to the two midnight rule payment policy, but, you know, following along with the the program in Serapia, interoperability programs we had discussed earlier. The CMS, is, there's no longer a requirement that a written inpatient admission ought to be present in the medical record. 
for the two midnight policy. And that's once again where the electronic record is taking over and CMS is once again putting the focus on patient care. So it's a good thing that no changes were made to the pay midnight payment policy and more of an emphasis on patient care and less paperwork again, which is a positive. I, I would agree. Uh, Dave, uh, it appears there's some significant changes to the low volume hospitals uh, payment adjustments. Can you explain those to us? Well, yeah, the the low volume um, payments that has been seems to have been going back and forth over the last um, few years. But um, what the uh, what the final rule did is is it established for fiscal years uh, 2019 through 2022. Um, it modifies, you know, the qualifying criteria, and also the uh, the payment formula that is used. Um, so, beginning in 2019, in order for a hospital to qualify, they must be more than 15 road miles from another hospital, and have less than 3,800 total discharges. Now, that'll get you to qualify. Now, the way the payment's going to work is. The payment's going to be built on a sliding scale, which will range from an additional, where you can receive an additional 25% payment for hospitals with 500 or fewer discharges. Up, and then, um, and then there's, there'll be no, if you have greater than the 3,800 discharges, you, you'll receive no additional payment. Now, if you're a, if you're a hospital that falls in between. Uh, the 3,800 discharges and the 500 discharges, um, there'll you'll, you'll be a calculation uh, where you'll subtract from the max, which is that 25%, the proration of the payments associated with the discharges in excess of uh, 500. So it's just a, a basically a sliding scale with um, the 25% being the max for 500 or fewer. And then it's, it'll, uh, the proportion as you move up to the 3,800 discharges, uh, your additional, that additional payment will be, um, will be calculated that way. Thanks, Dave. Uh, Bob, can you go through some of the changes uh, related to cost report submissions? Certainly, Mike. And um, a lot of these changes, most hospitals, have been doing and should be doing with their submission, but we're seeing the CMS look for more and more detail, and a lot of it's tied in with the S10, as that's going to become a more and more significant um, worksheet in the cost report. So if you're looking for Medicare bad debt reimbursement, you should be submitting a Medicare detailed bad debt listing that matches the amounts. The same as if you're getting a dish payment adjustment and you get Medicaid eligible days, you should be sending a listing of those eligible days. The new thing is also now with the S10 is your charity care and uninsured, you want to send a listing of your charity care patients and your uninsured discounts that you're reporting on the S10. You want to submit that with the cost report, and it's going to make your life easier down the road on the order to date if it ties to your cost report when you submit it, and then I'm going to come back. Also, I mean, as the systems grow across the country, home office, it's becoming a bigger and bigger piece of the course report. And they're going to now want you to submit a home office statement that ties into the report that you're using on the A8. That's significant, too. And, I mean, Dave, I don't know if you have anything to add to that on the home office. Well, with, um, yeah, with the home office, it's because um, a lot of hospitals, um, their year end wouldn't necessarily coincide with the year end of the home office. So what they're what CMS is requiring, if if you have if they have the same year in, then a copy of the home office report that ties to the hospital cost report uh, for the home office uh, amounts must match. Now, if they have different differing year ends, then the uh, home office cost for the portion of the cost reporting period that matches the, the home office cost report, that piece must match. So you're, so you're going to be required, hospitals are going to be required to um, 
not only file a copy of their home office report with their with the MAC who is the servicing um, MAC for the home office, but also if you have different if you if you have if the hospitals have different MACs, then your a copy of the home office report is going to need to go to the servicing MAC for the facilities as well. So that's um, that's just another um, thing that they're trying to do. Like Bob mentioned on these on the other um, aspects of the requirements for submission of the cost report, they're just trying to gather more information up front. Um, these are things that that most hospitals or all hospitals have to supply anyway. Uh, they're just making sure they get them up front now, or they're wanting to get them up front now, uh, in order to I, I'm assuming to to speed the the process of of um, settling the cost report, uh, try and speed that process along. Great, thanks, Dave. And the one other thing, I guess, in the last thing is the uh, if you've been completing cost reports, it was always a questionnaire, and it was from CMS three three nine. And that has now been totally incorporated into the course report software, so no no longer has to be submitted to CMS 339. So it's one last thing. The information is still there. It's just not submitted as a separate form anymore. So that's going forward. Well, Bob and Dave, thanks for the great discussion today. If you would like a copy of our full analysis of the 2019 IPPS final rule, just head over to Bessler.com, uh, click on the button that says blog at the top of the website, Scroll down and you will find that there. Uh, please go ahead and download your copy uh, or take a look at the slide share deck that's there. Uh, Bob and Dave, thanks so much for joining me today on the Hospital Finance Podcast. If you enjoy the Hospital Finance Podcast, please head up to iTunes to subscribe and leave us a positive review. This concludes today's episode of the Hospital Finance Podcast. For show notes and additional resources to help you protect and enhance revenue at your hospital, visit Bessler.com forward slash podcasts. The Hospital Finance Podcast is a production of Bessler. Smart about revenue, tenacious about results.